The purpose of this video is to show you how to conduct a basic Pearson chi-square analysis in SPSS where you want to test the difference between two independent proportions. So in this case the example is based on my ex-girlfriend's data where she did the taste testings of Pepsi versus Coke across 10 trials. Now to do the analysis you don't actually need this column of data. I just did that to uh, help you understand where the data come from or in terms of what the connection is. So in this case here, this is where you have to have data. So we have a variable called correct and 1 denotes a correct identification and 0 is incorrect. It wouldn't actually matter whether you coded this 0, 1 or 1, 2 or 4, 8. As far as SPSS is concerned, it doesn't matter. The analysis will give you the same result. So in this case, I coded correct 1 and incorrect 0. So to do the analysis, click on Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and here we have Chi-Square Analysis, which is in fact the Pearson Chi-Square Analysis. We have the variable called correct here, and I'm going to put that in the test variable list, and I can click OK. And here are the results associated with the analysis. The first table are basically my descriptive statistics which is that there were three incorrect observations, but seven correct observations. So my ex-girlfriend correctly identified seven, but failed three. The expected frequencies are five and five. And here are the residuals, which is just literally the difference between the observed and expected. This is, again, the foundation of the Pearson chi-square analysis. And then next, you get the test statistics, which are really just one statistic and that's the chi-square value which was calculated in the textbook with the formula and it gave exactly 1.60 and SPSS is giving exactly the same result as well and with one degree of freedom a value of 1.60 is not particularly big again think of the chi-square distribution there were many chi-square values that were larger than 1.6 and because this p-value is 0.206, we do not feel confident enough to reject the null hypothesis. So my ex-girlfriend could have produced these results just by chance. And in fact, we would expect to see about 21% of chi-square values to be bigger than 1.60. And those would just happen by chance with no ability to detect the difference between Pepsi and Coke. So it's not a strong enough result to suggest that my ex-girlfriend had the ability to detect the difference between Pepsi and Coke based on 10 trials. Now I'm just going to mention this last bit here underneath the table, and it says zero cells have expected frequencies less than five. The minimum expected cell frequency is five. I do talk about this in the textbook. I'm not going to repeat it here. But this rule that SPSS spits out automatically is not actually quite accurate. It's not a representation of the best knowledge we have today about the Pearson chi-square analysis. So I encourage you to check out the section of the textbook where I talk about minimum expected cell frequencies. It's more complicated than what's written here.